This is not a fantasy movie. It's quite clearly set in the year 1348. It says so, although it doesn't say where. Although, if you watch the DVD extras, it's quite clear. As soon as I read the script and I opened the page and it said England 1348. Which would explain why everyone speaks English. This shot, like several others, shows a rat, uh, reminding us of this idea that the plague was spread by rats, although it almost certainly wasn't. It was more likely to spread like the flu, you know, through coughs and sneezes. Right, well, we find ourselves in the biggest monk's cell in Christendom. And what an incredibly filthy one it is as well. Why don't they make him clean it up? Now, let's examine how this room is lit. There is this orangey light on the far wall. Quite clearly, it's not coming from this light here. So, from what? But there's also this white light in two big pools to the left. Uh, moonlight, presumably, shining through two massive holes in the wall. Well, if this is moonlight, then the moon is shining at that sort of angle. So, what on earth is causing this circle of light illuminating the crucifix on the back wall? Are there two moons in this world? Are you sure it's not fantasy? Here is our hero, a monk, and he lives in a world of medieval clichés. One in which mist drifts backlit across half the shots of the film, and people do lots of their work at night for no particular reason, with burning torches in the background. And uh, you'll see this massively powerful arc light. If they got lighting that powerful, what do they need the torches for? Uh, of course, everything happens at night because it's just so much more dramatic. And, of course, what we want to see is a plague doctor. Yes. There are three problems I can think of with this doctor's mask. Uh, the first is that the beak is a bit thin. They tended to be much fatter than that. And they were stuffed with sweet smelling things like rose petals in order to protect the wearer from the dangers of the miasmas. Uh, the next problem is that doctors wore these. And in this period, doctors were considered low status quacks. And I don't think you'd find one in a monastery. Uh, but perhaps the clincher is that these masks didn't appear until the 1600s. Sorry. Exciting footage now as we see an adventurer monk making his way through the dark corridors of the monastery. Well, dark apart from the massive amount of firelight and scorching the ceilings with this huge torch. Where is this moon meant to be? It's lighting up that crucifix on that wall and yet it's also shining through this door horizontally straight into this monk's face. How many moons are there? Lighting man, make up your mind. As is standard in these films, the monasteries are shown as bleak and white colourless, whereas in fact these people were Catholics and they were placed between a riot of decoration. Prostrate prayer, that did actually exist, and I'll put a lick of paint on the crucifix at least. Now we see this monk here has a proper tonsure, you see there's a tonsure, but uh, our man has a micro tonsure and you really have to be eagle-eyed to see it at any point. Yes, can you see it in this shot for instance? You can see everyone else's tonsure, but not his because presumably that wouldn't have been cool. More rats? And, you know, bodies would have been washed, scrupulously clean. You must go back to Dunwich. And she does. She leaves immediately. It seems everything was ready to go. She even had a horse saddled up and ready to go, waiting outside for her. This poor girl, she wears rags, but she's got her own horse, or, or one that no one will mind her taking in perpetuity. And uh, he puts on her his cloak. Now, of course, he is slightly taller than her, so you might think it might look a little bit long on her. And yet, when she rides away... It nearly reaches the ground off the horse. Hello. Oh, haven't you got a comb? He says I need a comb. You do. More plain walls here. Come on, paint it red, why not? Even the tapestries well, look old no, and faded. Why is that then? This is the medieval period. They should all look brand new. Our man, Seen Bean, arrives on the scene and strides up and down for no particular reason. Maybe he's nervous. He's carrying a sword. It seems unlikely that someone will be allowed to wear a sword inside a monastery, but then maybe this is filmmaker's shorthand uh, telling us how powerful and influential and threatening he is. Do you think we put out enough candles? He tells us of the film's premise. Word has reached the bishop of a village that does not suffer as the rest do. We were told quite clearly that it was 1348. Well, in November 1348, this is the amount of the country that had been affected by the plague. So it's really not very remarkable that there was a village somewhere that hadn't been affected by the plague. Why didn't they say uh, 1349 or 1350? By that stage, pretty much everywhere had been hit by the plague, and it really would be remarkable that some village had been spared. I require a guide, a man of God, to show the way. 
This request strikes me as very strange. Why would anyone need a guide? And why would you go to a monastery and ask for a monk to guide you? That's weirder still. In this period, it's really not difficult to find a village. You say, which road do I take? And someone says, take that one. And then you go down it and there's the village. And so our romantic hero monk bids goodbye to the monastery and with the world's smallest tonsure, sets forth for adventure with the mysterious Hospitaller Knight played by Sean Bourne, walks past the completely out of place excarnation platforms and sets off for adventure based on a dodgy premise. Quack, quack.